Hi everyone! It's been a little while it since has. we've done a video. Uh, winter. Winter. Winter got the best of us. So basically we're going to do a February and March wrap up. Which, two months, yeah. Despite the fact that it's two months, I only read. And we both have pretty shy piles. Uh, <laughs> um, but we'll do it. Yeah, and hopefully we'll get more reading done this spring. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Most recently I read Being There by... Kaczynski. Kaczynski. It was $1.99 at my favorite bookstore in KW. Second book. And it was short and I had been reading such long books mm. and struggling to get through them that I just wanted something fast. And I really, really liked it. It was easy to read in that like I was in the book right away, but it wasn't... It wasn't like a, a simple read, it was, you know, complex ideas happening. And as I said, it was, I read it in like three days. You um, did. It's kind of like a musings on kind of like a character who whose only contact with the outside world in his early life was television. So um, it's pretty interesting. The next one I, I read before that was Butterfield 8 by John... O'Hara. I wanted this to be better than it was. Mm. Um, it was written like I think 1935 maybe? 34? 34 about. and it's about a harlot. Hmm. Like she, she's a hard drinking, hard partying woman and kind of what ends up happening to her and the story itself is really interesting and the some of the structure is is pretty interesting like it flips from person to person without necessarily telling you it's flipping. Dialogue tends to just like you're once you're introduced to who the characters are talking to they stop naming names and being clear to you who's talking and, and I like that element of it. It just it didn't quite work and I don't know if that's just because the subject matter was so risque hmm. of the time that some of the writing got a bit like pulpy and hokey I guess is the way to put it but I would definitely like Recommend it if you're really, like, if you're into that time period. Depression era kind of style writing and, and interesting from, like, a gender perspective. But it, it wasn't as good as, as I wanted it to be. That's too bad. I finally finished by Grand Central Station. I sat down and wept and I love it and it's become one of my favorite works. I love it so much. I don't, obviously I don't need to talk about it because I've talked about it a lot you and have. a lot of people have read it but it's beautiful and wonderful and amazing and I really do think that a lot of people should read it. It's, it's quite good. Something else I finished was Memoirs of a Catholic Girlhood by Mary McCarthy. I, I liked it a lot. I mean, I like, like she's kind of my light read author. Like if I'm looking for kind of something not so heavy to read, um, I tend to read her and it was good. It, it, it was interesting. It was a lot of like musings on kind of like religion and what that does to kind of like raising children. Um, I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a critique of religion, but I wouldn't say that it's also pro-religion. It's kind of just like her recounting her own. It's kind of interesting because it's like she wrote it and then like she wrote it like a story and then she muses on what she is real and not real in the story. So that's mm. kind of interesting in a form I haven't seen too much where it's like you get the section that's like kind of the story, like it's a short story of like a time. And then right after that, you get like her actually kind of like dissecting it to being like, I embellished on this part, but this part was very real. That's and interesting. Yeah. A lot of writers seem to do that now. That's yeah. it. It's become a sort of a gimmick in, in a lot of like short stories and current, current writing. So yeah. I've found. Well, this isn't current, but. Imitated. Yeah. <laughs> Often imitated. Yes. The other thing I finished in February, um, is The Vagabond, and it was awesome, and I enjoyed it, and I want to read more Colette now. Oh, she's great. Yeah, I want to read more too. I finished White Apples by Jonathan Carroll. Not my favorite. He's a light read for me, so I don't hold him to high regard. I, I love The Wooden Sea a lot. I, I think that is... It's the one to read. Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's really good, but it's not necessarily his writing that's really good. It's more just his different approach to character. He's usually like writes pretty great women and pretty great men 
for the women. So in terms of like kind of this noir detective mystery sci-fi magical realism, like he's all those things this in one. Yeah, yeah, all these wonderful things in one that normally A, you get separately, and normally B, it's written by men for men. Mm. And this isn't particularly written for any gender. And that's something I like about him. So kind of, I allow him his flaws. I allow him his cheesy lines. He's got a lot of cheesy lines. Yeah. Um, and, and so I kind of, I forgive him for them because the magic in his books are, are totally worth it. But this wasn't really my favorite. I didn't, I didn't hate it, but I didn't love it. The last thing I, I finished in February, well, I, I kind of, kind of skimmed <laughs> was a uh, Tenders of the Night. I just kind of got yeah. I just got kind of fit. I mean, I don't Jeez. even, I can't even say I really read it past halfway through the book. No. I kind of just skimmed Thereafter. over the chapters. I just, you know, I get it. I get you, F. Scott. It's one of his longer novels, too. That's why I've never tried to tackle it, yeah, it's too personally. Long. It's just, it's a lot of, a lot of man thoughts <laughs> that I'm not really, I get it. He's a man. Hey. I get it. Glad we established that he's a man. Yeah. <laughs> My turn. Mm-hmm. Well. Most of the books I read this month, were, they were actually library books, so I don't have them to, to hold up, unfortunately, but I'll share those books that I do have to hold up. I think the first I read was Ida. Yeah, I bought Richard this, Stein. and he was just like, I'm reading it, I'm and reading took it. it from me. You weren't reading it? I read it. I didn't even have a chance. I, no. brought it, I brought it back to my place, and you were just like, whoop. I beat you to the chase. <laughs> what can I say? I beat you to the chase. <laughs> And I loved it. I love Gertrude Stein. Her style is just fantastic. And here, her style is, is almost crystallized to its its most intensely Gertrude Stein, you know? It's, it's the a Gertrude pretty, Stein of Gertrude yes, Stein. Yes, <laughs> yes. It's, it's just as Gertrude Stein as Gertrude Stein gets. And I loved it, because I love her. The next book was uh, one I've been meaning to read for actually quite a long time. And I think I finally read it because... Uh, because it was Andy who, who insisted I read it. And it was part of some, uh, it was a, a group on Goodreads, uh, and I think Nor Northern I Irish Writers, something like ah, that. Ah, yeah, I remember now. But the book is The Third Policeman by Flann O'Brien. Flann O'Brien being a, a pseudonym, actually. I can't remember his real name. But it's quite a strange book. Quite a, an absurd, surreal book. I'd almost call it sort of in the vein of nonsense that, uh, that Lewis Carroll created, without being explicitly an Alice in Wonderland knockoff, you know, and, uh, and right up my alley. So I loved it. A book I expected to love, but did not love at all. I mean, I started off loving it, I think, because I liked the author, but it, by the end of it, I was just, I was just dragging along. I could barely bring myself to read it. And that is The Compass Stone by Fernando Arabelle. I showed it off in a, I think it was a hall, mm -hmm. and I was so excited, because I know him as a playwright and not a novelist, I was so excited to find a novel, but it just did not live up to my expectations, without going into too much detail. Otherwise, I've been reading a lot of poetry. Surprise, surprise. I've been reading a lot of Robert Creeley. I mean a lot. I think I read uh, four or five of his books. Oh. in the past two months. And I love him. I think he's my new favorite poet. What's your favorite of those books? My favorite was Pieces. Pieces is an excellent collection of poetry. It's Why? a... It's a... I, he, he's just all over the place. I think, uh, I think that's something I like about his style, is that it's, it's very fragmented. I mean, that's why he called the collection Pieces, I think, is, is because it's almost like he took all these poems and just, just, just sort of scattered them in, into pieces. You, there are even times when it seems like one poem is scattered across like three different poems and you wonder why he did that. Yeah, it's a very interesting collection. Pieces. Uh, otherwise, I've been reading a lot of, well, not as much of, but a good amount of Denise Lavatov. She's, uh... Another favorite right now. I really like her. She's uh, this collection, is, in particular, is, is very political. Yeah, I like the cover. I like the cover too, and I think you'd like her poetry. Mm -hmm. It's very political. She's very, uh, she's very brass tacks. Again, what is the collection that you've read? Oh, that the, you, you would. 
the suggest. collection of prayers that I would suggest yeah. is uh, to stay alive. To stay alive is an excellent collection. It's almost uh, it's a, it's a, it's one long poem really. It's it's like the wasteland. It's one long poem. It just goes in a lot of different directions, but it does have its unifying themes. It's very uh, autobiographic, though I know she doesn't associate with confessional poets of the time, poets like Sylvia Plath. She's, uh, I don't know, doing her own thing with it and being very overtly political at a time when that wasn't... I mean, it was popular for... It was popular and it was unpopular, you know? It was the Vietnam War, so... Yeah. Very good. She's a very good poet. Strongly recommend her. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Those are the highlights of what I read this uh, these past two months. Okay. I only I currently only have two current day readings, which is like the smallest it's been in like two years. Oh. The first one I'm reading is Women as Lovers by Alfred Jelinek. Maybe. You got it, okay. I don't know if I got it, but let's hope I got it. Um, she is the author of The Piano Teacher, which oh, is yeah. a film I love quite a lot. I love The Piano Teacher. Um, it's an excellent film. Very excellent film, and I am enjoying this. The back describes it as two factory workers, Bridget and Paula, dream and talk about finding happiness, a comfortable home, and a good man. That is not at all what this no, is about. No, that really doesn't do it justice. Even a little bit. Um, it is... It's very experimental. Very experimental. Uh, there's there's very little, like, if you can see even from this page, there's very little, like, spacing or gaps or punctuation. Um, it's very dry, like it never goes into I. We're dry, always... Yeah. Removed. We're always removed from the characters. Um, the chapter heads aren't always chapter heads. They're no. like one kind of word, and sometimes they're right in the middle of a paragraph. But that, yeah. that's kind of like your break. It's is one line, almost like poetry. Like it kind of breaks into poetry and po prose. But that's then, kind of, then like all of a sudden, she's using like really coarse, you know, lower class language, and then the next minute. Yeah. High language again, so it, it is. It's very it's all over the place, mix of and and it's very much an exploration of like the pointlessness of of, of being a woman. Female existential crisis, yeah. which we don't see a lot, and that's part of what what makes it such an yeah. excellent book. And not done this way, like where I actually how I started, I like what it reminded me of for me is in Watermelon Sugar. And oh. the two female characters in Watermelon Sugar, the ver like the yeah. mother and the and the whore, and that's kind of what this is exploring. It's written in kind of a similar detached in, kind in a of simple way. Simple and detached style, yes. And I think that's what she's playing with. Yeah. I, I mean, I just can't see why not. I mean, I like the names and every like it's just it's very. I saw some Gertrude Stein in her writing in her in her experimentation too. I would definitely recommend it if you're if you're into more experimental fiction. Absolutely. Um, so the next thing I'm reading is Italio Calvino, If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. Yes. And it's so delightful. Yes. I don't know how many of you out there have read it, but the first chapter is Yeah, I'm gonna read the first paragraph because I feel like if you love books Oh yes. This this opening. So, chapter one. You are about to begin reading Italio Calvino's new novel, If on a Winter's Night a Traveler. Relax, concentrate, dispel every other thought, let the world around you fade. Best to close the door. The TV is always on in the next room. Tell the others right away. No, I don't want to watch TV. Raise your voice. They won't hear you otherwise. I'm reading. I don't want to be disturbed. Maybe they haven't heard you, with all that racket. Speak louder, yell. I'm beginning to read Italio Calvino's new novel. Or if you prefer, don't say anything. Just hope they'll leave you alone. That's good. I'm borrowing the book, and it's very beautiful. It's it a very, very beautiful copy. And I don't want to read it if I can, like, smudge it, or if like, my hands aren't clean, or I'm not sitting in, like, the perfectly comfortable position. No harm can come to this book. Yeah, no, I'm, like, guarding this book. So, I'll probably move through this pretty slow, but I kind of want to. I kind of want to savor it a little you bit. You do. Um, so that's it. That's what I'm, I'm current currently name? reading. I'm really excited yeah. to, to get through If on a Winter's Night of Travelers. I think you guys are probably going to be hearing about that one a lot. Oh, no doubt. Currently reading an author I read um, earlier in the month. 
I finished her first collection of poetry, and now I'm on to Pigeon by Karen Soleil. Or Soleil, or I don't know. I'm gonna say first that the cover of her other book is much better than this one. She's a Canadian poet, and uh, so far I'm preferring the other collection, and that was uh, Modern and Normal. Not much to say about it yet. I'll come back to that. The other book I'm currently reading, I'm not far, so I can't say much about it either, is Dusk and Other Stories by James Salter. And I picked this up because Sophie, the uneducated reader, recommended A Sport and a Pastime by the same author. But I was feeling more like short stories, so I thought I'll start with this. And that's it. That's what I'm reading. That's it. You finally... This is... It's not as exciting as probably everyone thought. No. We haven't read as much as we normally do. No. You'd think we would have had stacks and stacks considering... Two months. It's been a while, yeah. but it's been a slow... It's been a slow, slow winter. Slow yeah. winter. Before we end, I just wanted to have, say a big thank you to Miriam, um, who is Lines in Life on Twitter, who is always like so the best to us and it you know when we'd stopped blogging she she or when we stopped making videos when we stopped making videos she kind of like a few weeks after that she wrote this wonderful wonderful blog post she did uh that was very encouraging and it was. is probably one of the reasons that we're we you know we're forcing ourselves to get yeah. back into it because she's just you know, always on Twitter being like, your videos are awesome. Hey, do you want to start a book club? Hey, what are you reading? You can't ignore that kind of encouragement. Yeah, it's like, we gotta keep doing this. So, thank you very much, Miriam. You are really great, and you are. we love your blog, too. We do. So. And not just because you talk about us a lot. <laughs> um, we, we will be getting to your tag mm. very, very soon, so. That's right. The favorites tag. Yeah, the favorites tag. So that's an upcoming video. That is an upcoming video. You can look forward to that. <laughs> anyway, we're we're gonna go. We're gonna sign off. Yeah, maybe read some books. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, bye everyone. Bye.